Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Welcome everyone to the first ever episode of the Overmark Podcast. Okay, this podcast is known as the Group Chat. I'll be your host, uh, Daryl. And here with me is none other than Emmanuel. Hey, what's up guys? I'm, uh, I'm actually a tutor at AM Academy. And so my passion lies in educating and giving insights to the youth. Lah. So I think all of you guys are more or less uh, interested in finding, about the, finding out about the next stages of your life. So that's what this podcast is for, right? We just want to give you a bit of insights into a bit of uh, adulthood and um, the next phase of your, of your life, the next journey of your life. So we want to be able to give you some um, knowledge, some particular uh, frameworks to think about your next few actions, which could be really crucial uh, in determining how, how you enjoy your life over the next few years. Uh. So Daryl and I are very excited to have you on board to uh, hear, hear out our views again. Yeah, and, and we hope that uh, we are able to always provide some value to you. Yeah, I mean, this podcast, this is really the first ever episode. We have no idea how we're going to run this thing. We're just going to have a conversation about all things uh, related to students. We're just going to, you know, talk about anything under the sun. Uh, we hope that you guys will enjoy listening to the sort of content we, we are excited to provide. With this first ever episode for our group chat, we're really excited because we're going to be talking about is choosing your JC. You know, with O-levels over and everybody just partying like hell, you know, Come the day when you receive your O-level score, have you ever thought about which JC you want to go to? You know, I think this is a topic that is so important because choosing your JC really determines your next educational journey, you know, taking your next step from O-levels now moving on to JC. It's quite a bit of things you would want to look out for and quite a little bit of things you would want to consider, you know, when you're choosing your JC. So in today's podcast, we'll be bringing you all things, everything you want to know about choosing your JC. So Emmanuel, uh, maybe tell us a little bit more about what's your top process for yourself when you chose your JC? Okay, I think first I'll start off with why JC also. Lah. So um, I feel that uh, a lot of my friends were also in the same predicament. Like they, they don't exactly know uh, what they wanted. Um, so I feel that one of the main reasons why I went to JC is because I didn't have a definite path uh, in a particular industry. I didn't have any particular interest um, nor any vision for my career back at that age. And so that's why I decided that it would be safer for me to keep my options still open with JC. La. Because I feel that when you go into um, uh, polytechnic, you kind of narrow down your choices, which is a good thing if you know exactly what you want. So um, knowing that, well, I, I, I didn't have that much of any interest in any particular field, JC was a safer choice. La. And then the next thing was uh, looking at uh, my O-level score, I decided to, to go with uh, a, a, uh, rather a JC that... I was uh, able to enter and was, was comfortable with. La. So uh, I actually ended up in CJ, uh, where my sister was actually uh, also there before me. La. So I had a very, very good impression uh, about CJ already back then. And um, when I entered the school, it was real. La. Like everything that uh, I expected from that school, I really did get. Uh, and it actually really, really helped me um, do well in A-levels as well. So I managed to actually graduate with, uh, with a pretty good score, get into a local U about, eight, uh, I think my rank point was 86. So um, like I, I had a lot of apprehension uh, before entering uh, JC because I was thinking that, okay, my O-level score is not all that great. So I was very concerned with, okay, if I go to like maybe like a mid-tier JC, which is, which is essentially a CJ. Like, no, no hate on this, right? Just saying, okay, like, like um, CJ, I was quite concerned. Like, am I able to still do well for the A-levels? Will it be worth my while? And wow, I, I really have to say it was really worth my while. Like. And I really enjoyed my time there. And I felt that the teachers there were really enriching. So I can't speak for all JCs, but at least that was my experience in CJ. And I also realized, I came to realize that um, the school that you actually end up with uh, doesn't depend as much as your own personal drive and doesn't depend as much as the company uh, that you choose to hang out with within that school. Uh. So I feel that no matter what, wherever you go to, there will always be that group of people that uh, perhaps uh, you need to find, okay, which could motivate you in the right way. It could lead you to where exactly you want to go. Uh. Yeah. So uh, I feel that my experience in CJ was extremely good. Okay, I would still say it was the best two years of my life. Okay. Uh, that being said, I'm very, very sure, and, and Daryl will definitely share with you guys also, that many other JCs probably provide the same, if not even better, right, experience that uh, I had. So you maybe want to share a bit more about, about yourself, Daryl, also? 
Hey, hey, I- I'll be happy to share uh, about my experience, but maybe I'll save it later on for, for another segment here uh, to share about my own personal journey. Mine was a little bit different because I was a DSA, so I actually was choosing between Termasic JC and DJC. I'll share my entire story of how I ended up in one of the JCs later. But just, you know, just to segue away from this, Emmanuel, so you're saying that you went to CJC, you thought that it was like a mid-tier JC. So it brings me to my very first question for you. You know, having been an A-level tutor yourself for uh, H2 Physics, right? I'm sure you have worked with a couple of students from the different JCs. You know, we have a list of JC in Singapore. Um, you know, the common ones, you know, everybody will know is like Hua Chong and RI, you know. And then following there closely behind is probably like Nanyang, DJ and uh, NJC. So to you, right, uh, how important is the tier of the JC? Let's say top five versus the middle JCs versus the bottom five JCs, if I put it that way. Do you think it's important? Does it make a difference? Well, personally, after um, after my experience with quite a few students, I feel that uh, it doesn't really matter where they come from. Because as long as they have the work ethic, then you can really make it happen now. At the end of the day, nowadays, uh, there's plenty of access to very good resources, like for example, on Overmark. Um, yeah, like notes that you can acquire online, assessment papers that you can find easily online also. It's really whether or not you have put in the effort to, to well, uh, get ahead of the curve, lah, essentially. And I feel that, yeah, there is a, a few uh, big distinctions between uh, certain JCs, um, but that is not because of the JCs though. So like when I do my, when I interact with some of the students, I realize that there is perhaps a very different culture in each school, uh, but that is not something that, you know, you can't change. That is not something that uh, is limited, it's fixed. It is completely dynamic. It's up to you, right, to, to determine how hard you want to work, what kind of routine you want to build into your, your workflow. And so, okay, uh, my personal experience is that for the students I teach that come from the better JCs, uh, their culture is just the kind where they are constantly working and they are constantly trying to upgrade themselves. They're constantly uh, looking to, to really just get the best grades, um, to work as hard as they can, uh, understand the concepts well, and always just have extra practice. Whereas perhaps um, students who come from uh, the more relaxed JCs, they are in an environment where they want to, uh, you know, maybe they, they, they have other focuses in life. So perhaps they, they want to uh, have more time with their friends, uh, enjoy more um, of the other, other activities in life. And I think that's fair, that's fair as well. But at the end of the day, in JC, it's also a very big test on whether you can balance um, between these demands that you have lah. So I feel that no, uh, JCs do not require, or rather they do not have a particular a good or bad segment in that sense that it's fixed. I feel that at the end of the day, a lot of it is up to you. Lah. Okay, so, so what we did, right, was that uh, because we have a team of uh, 11 tutors here at Overmark, so we actually got uh, each of the tutors to share a little bit more about their own JC. So this is not my uh, experience speaking for them, but this is more of like their own experience. So I think I'll start off at the top. Lah. I mean, we, we just want to start uh, going down the list. Okay, so let's start with Hua Chong first. So uh, our GP tutor, Victoria, actually attended Hua Chong. So this is what she has to say about her own school. Okay, uh, she, she says that, you know, Hua Chong, there's a very strong school spirit and very vibrant culture. The campus is nice. It's beside the MRT. There are a lot of capable teachers and good resources. And contrary to popular belief, going to Hua Chong doesn't mean there's only nerds. There's actually a very good balance of fun and outgoing sporty people. At the same time, right, uh, Sing Wei and uh, Sing Wei, which is our O-level bio tutor, and Han Jin, which is our lower sec tutor, also talked about how, you know, uh, for their own school, because they came from RI, there is, it's really a school whereby there's resources there for the students. So there's a lot of like uh, developmental programs. It, they even have this uh, higher education office for career guidance. So I think, you know, when we are talking about the top schools here, there's a certain degree of truth when it comes to uh, the kind of resources you can gain access to. Putting in that into context, Imeno, I'm just curious to find out your perspective because I think all students, if we do have the chance and, you know, our L1, R5 is good enough, we probably would want to go to a top five JC. So let's just say, right, if our cutoff point is right on the brink of the top five JC, would you encourage a student to go for it? Would you rather be a small fish in a big pond or would you rather be a big fish in a medium pond? Well, I would definitely persuade 
uh, the student to go to the top five JC. La. I feel that, okay, when you go to JC, right, you need to have the growth mindset. So you shouldn't be thinking, okay, I'm a small fish in a big pond. You should be thinking, okay, I'm a, a small fish now entering a big pond, but that's exactly where I grew bigger. So that, that is something that uh, I like to always emphasize to my students also. Like, don't just try to um, hit the expectations that other people may have of you. Try to always exceed and, and find the, the boundaries that you yourself are determined to break. Because only then, right, you really will do outstandingly well for yourself. And I feel that there's always more fulfillment in pushing yourself early on rather than, you know, just having that left, uh, that, that last bit of potential that you're not utilizing. Lah. So my point here is always try to maximize and apply yourself in uh, whatever way you can, especially if that means going to a better school. Because I think that when you go there, you also meet um, probably brighter and more competitive minds, which could push you further ahead also. Lah. So that is my own perspective. I know that other people do, however, um, prefer a more relaxed environment where they are on top of their game constantly. So they like to be a, a bigger fish in a smaller pond. And I, I guess it really depends on your personality type as well. So different people react to different circumstances, well, differently. Lah. So you have to know yourself. Lah. But personally, I would say, always try to push yourself for more because you'll always be happy and fulfilled that you've done so. Okay, I've never had that one time where I regret working hard. Lah. I, I think maybe that, that might just be for me. Okay, I don't know. But I don't, I don't regret working hard. And I also don't regret like trying to push myself for more. So Emmanuel, if, if you yourself, you know, you had the chance to, to go to a top tier JC, right? Would you have done it? Wow, that question is a bit tough. Leh. Okay, I, would, I think I would still have chosen to go to a better JC. Uh, that being said, I really love my time at CJ. Lah. Okay, so sentimental wise, uh, I would I would really love CJ, okay, and I had the best experiences there. Um, but if I really did better, knowing myself and and, and how I, I was like then, I would also probably want to go to a better JC lah. What what about yourself? Ah? I, I mentioned that I rather you mentioned that you were choosing between TJ and VJ, right? So you from my understanding, you you were TJ Cian lah. So why not yeah. VJ? Okay, okay. Let, let me explain a little bit more about uh, my journey. Okay, so I start a bit earlier, la, all the way from my PSLE. Okay, my PSLE, I actually got 261, which is like, well, not bad, right? Okay, so that was just enough then for a cutoff point to go to RI. By that point in time, you are just 12 years old. You don't even know what you're doing, right? So my mom decided that I'll be better off not being the bottom of the barrel in RI. So she actually uh, told me to enroll in Catholic High, with which then was the cutoff point was around 248. So when I entered the Catholic High cohort, I was actually considered uh, like doing better academically. La. So when I went to Cat High, I think the culture there was, was great in terms of the drive for excellence, uh, not only academically, but also in sports as well. So I myself, I played floorball. So during my four years there, I actually achieved uh, quite a sizable amount. We actually won the national champs, la, which, which is pretty amazing because uh, when I just entered, uh, floorball just started. So during the span of four years when we started the CCA from scratch till when I graduated as a year four and we actually won the championship, it actually helped me build my character a lot. So my next step was to consider which JC I wanted to go to. At that point in time, the JCs that offered floorball DSA were mainly VJC and TJC. So for myself, the consideration was to DSA to either one of them. It was a bit crazy on hindsight because I stayed, I stayed in Ishun. But then the schools are all the way in the east. So it takes me one hour to go there. So both took me one hour. So I, was, I didn't know which one to choose because both of them had their merits. So I ended up flipping a coin. And the coin flip uh, ended me up in TJ. Yep. It's fate. It's fate. <laughs> Man, I think it's fate. But, but I think my major consideration at that point in time, uh, because in the end, I, for my O-levels, I actually got uh, straight A's for all my subjects except for English. So my L1, R5 was actually 8, which is like English B3, la, but the rest all A1. So uh, I may have gotten a chance to enter RI or Hua Chong, or maybe uh, VJ or NJC. But I ended up in TJC, which is more of like a middle tier JC, if I put it that way. So for myself, it was more of a medium fish, okay, uh, a big fish in a medium pond kind of idea. Because I settled for lesser than if I would have pushed myself. I'll put it that way. Did I regret it? If I had a chance to choose again, I would choose to go to a better JC. <laughs> yeah. okay, okay, but 
that's not saying that I regretted going to TJ as well. So it is, I think it's a similar situation to yours whereby you say you, you have fond memories of CJ, you don't regret your choice, but given a choice, right, you would have gone to a better JC. So I think mm. I'm similar with you on the aspect of choosing a better JC because I do feel that the better JCs do have better resources. And I'm of a belief that you are who you surround yourself with. Right. Okay. But this is not saying that, you know, the middle tier JCs, okay. they don't have uh, studious students or it's all bad influence and stuff. I think that's not true. But I just think that there's a higher proportion of higher achievers in those better JCs and you kind of try to measure yourself up to them. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that's a very, very valid. Point. Um, definitely culture is one. I think we're, we're both talking about culture like, at the end of the day. The culture of the elite schools or the top five will definitely be, be something that should be of consideration uh, if you are deciding on where to go or rather which JC to pick. I think both of us, we, we are agreeable on the point on that if you do well, go for the best JC you can go to. Agreed. All Fully right. Agreed. Okay, but I mean, not everybody is that fortunate. Sometimes you just don't hit the benchmark you have for yourself. So we also ask our other tutors because some of our tutors are also from JCs like myself, like TJ, you know. Um, so Elaine, uh, which is our H2 chemistry tutor and Charlene, which is our H2 math tutor, they are both from SAJC. And SAJC is right there in the middle of what we'll uh, consider a very decent JC, but not say your top five JC. So I think they both shared that there's also not just focus on your academics. There's also focus on your personal development. The school culture is very strong in developing your personal well-being and they actually do quite well in their CCA, both for performing arts uh, as well as their sports. And they say that uniform look nicer and they claim that, you know, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's good. Lah. But I mean, okay, but here's my next question, Emmanuel. So of all the things to consider for JC, right, let's start one by one and you tell me how important these factors are. Okay, let's talk about CCA first. So what CCA were you from? And did the CCA of the JC affect your choice when you chose your JC? I was actually in, in rugby. Like. So, okay, to me, I didn't plan to join rugby. But like when I went into um, CJ, then my friends just asked me, you know, uh, hey, you want to join us or not? We need players kind of thing. And, I, and, I, and so I did. Like. It ended up being very tiring. But then I loved it. Like, and um, okay, my principal back then shared with me a very interesting t- statistic uh, that the CJ kids, at least for, for the batches before me and for my own batch also, um, the sports, sports CCAs, right, actually end up doing better despite having much more time commitment as compared to uh, other co-curricular activities. So just one point to consider, uh, and uh, this could be due to many reasons, like you value your time a bit more, so you're more structured with it uh, because time is fast. And so you want to make the most of whatever you have. Right, whereas for other people, they are very happy, go lucky, dilly dally kind of thing. So they are they're very chill when they don't have that time constraint. Uh. And that modifies their behavior. Yeah. So uh, CCA wise, it wasn't a very big concern for me. Um, and it shouldn't, yeah, unless you're a national team player or you are very into sports, I don't think your CCA should be a big determinant of which JC you choose. Man, oh man, this is the first time we're going to disagree here. Okay, because for, for me, uh, I was quite heavily invested into floorball. Uh, back in the day, I used to train four to maybe even seven times. A little bit of background, like, I was part of the, the, the group that Emmanuel mentioned because I was actually part of the youth team. So I actually took my sport quite seriously. So when I was choosing my JC, uh, my CCA was actually a big point of consideration. So at that point in time, between VJ and TJ, right, VJ actually had the much better floorball team uh, in terms of their history and culture. TJC's uh, floorball team was pretty non-existent, but I made the choice to go to TJ because I wanted to be a trailblazer there. And I feel like in my two years there, we, we actually came close. We came in second place in my first year and we were fourth place in my second year. But all things considered, right? If you ask me right now, would I have chosen TJ or VJ, right? I would have chosen VJ. Okay, for this reason, it's not that I, I don't like TJ or anything, but when I was there, our principal wasn't very pro sports. So she wasn't very pro CCAs. So in terms of like the funding and the sort of the school direction it was going, it uh, hampered the sports CCA quite a bit. We weren't given the resources to, to do well. So I feel like if, if you are like me in a situation where you take your CCA and interest quite seriously, uh, in the sense that you intend to still continue pursuing it in the future, like myself, I continued to play 
uh, in university. I even went on to represent Singapore and things like that. I think your CCA does matter yeah. and you want to be in a school where it has a culture to support it. So that's my point of view. Yeah. Mm, I, okay, la, I guess yeah, la, for, for people who are very invested in their sports, then yeah, you should take it into consideration. And I think, okay, another point that you mentioned also was um, holistic development, right? Yep, yep. So I think that this really, really is uh, the bulk of it. La. It's really not just academics all the time. And so if, if you feel that uh, the avenue provided through your CCA helps you develop holistically, then that is not something that you should take lightly. So you should really try to pursue all fronts of development, not just academic ones. Yeah, so I guess, for, okay, but, but for different people, uh, that would be different. Lah. So you have to see based on your circumstances, your wants, your needs, okay, and how you, you think you can best grow, uh, whether or not CCA should be a major factor in your decision making framework. Yeah. Emmanuel, I'll just okay, say right? Yeah, to, to yeah. another question, right? Let's, but then, you know, in JC, time is limited, right? You know, you have to study, you need your social life, you have CCA, right? So let's say there's this triangle, okay? Sleep, academics, and CCA. Out of the three, right, which one do you think is most important? Okay, uh, which, which one would you let go if this was you? Or which one did you do yourself? For me, I think... Sleep, wow, social, is very hard hard. sleep academics, sleep, CCA, slash academic. social life, yeah. Well, I think that, okay, personally, I managed to achieve all three. Leh. So I don't, I think that with proper time planning, you can, you can accomplish all three. Um, but then again, some people would be saying, eh, if I, like, you know, not everybody can, can really ration their time, right? And they also don't really know exactly how much they should be spending on each time. So which one should you prioritize if you have a time constraint? I would say I would still prioritize studies first and then probably... CCA next. My sleep will, will take a toll. La, for sure. <laughs> I, I but, myself, okay. yeah. So for myself, I prioritize my CCA first and sleep second. I didn't pay attention to my studies. But I'm just going to leave it there because I think that's another topic for another day as we want to talk about, you know, how you should approach your JC. Uh, I think they were pretty... Re- if you ask me again, I'll do the same thing. But uh, let's, let's share that for another time. Okay, so CCA might be a point of consideration if uh, you are like invested in it. So some students, they were wondering, okay, since there is no CCA points in JC, right? What's your opinion on it? Should students take part in like a lepak CCA, then they just need to turn up once a week for one hour kind? Or do you encourage them to, to really go for it in their CCAs? Wow, I think that you should always, uh, okay. Well, it really depends on what kind of JC life that you want. But for me, I found a lot of fun in competing in ADIPS. Uh, and I feel that the kind of opportunity you get to build that camaraderie between you and your teammates doesn't come frequently. So if you're somebody who's always wanted to belong to a team, you're a team player, or you wanted to build bonds that uh, normal friendships might not have, then the CCA is really something that you, you need to look into because uh, you will make friends for life there. Like. And I, I personally have like really like friends for life, but like, we still hang out. Um, we talk to each other like almost daily kind of thing from my CCA. And so it, it's a um, well, it's something that you don't get elsewhere, lah. And so you want to take this opportunity also, uh, to really cherish that, you know, like building proper friendships, building deep and meaningful friendships with friends, uh, for a common goal, lah. And it's something that you cannot find elsewhere. I I don't think okay, personally, right, in in uni, I don't think you you would be able to build that kind of strong bonds also. Um, maybe not as strong, right? Because in JC, you really see each other like, like almost every day. La. So that is something that, you know, uh, you won't get ever in your life again. And trust me, when you come out to work, right? <laughs> no such thing. None, right? It's your last opportunity, right? Or second last opportunity. So yeah, go for it. La. Like, yeah, no regrets. Yeah, man. I, I kind of relate to that point too. So... Like, if you are having a really bad day, you're going through a really bad stretch, right? The people that will be there for you are your secondary school and JC friends. And that, that, that's, that's my opinion. La. Like, the friends you make uh, in your youth, right, the ones you stick with. But I would say, you know, choose your friends carefully. You don't need a lot of friends. You just need a few close friends. Okay, but moving on. So, first point of consideration was the CCA. I think we both agree. It really depends on how invested you are in uh, your, your certain field. 
And I think going to a school that supports that uh, sort of passion that you're looking at does matter. Uh, but if you are more casual on the CCA front, then I think that's not that big of a point of like consideration. Okay, second point of consideration, how big is distance a factor? Massive. I would say massive, really. How massive? Like, okay. I would say that it should be one of the main considerations because as you draw closer and closer and closer to your, your, uh, your A-level dates, right, and your exams, or even, you don't even need to talk so far, lah, for the JC ones, it's, or rather for set force using to the, the podcast, as you draw closer and closer to the promotional exams, lah, okay, which is very stressful, by the way, okay, uh, you probably find yourself in a squeeze of time. So every hour does count, right? And like if it helps uh, you to be more focused and to be more organized with your time by having like, you know, shorter commutes, Right, then you should really consider uh, JC, uh, a JC closer to your home. So for me, well, CJ is by the highway. Lah. It wasn't that far from my house. It was like about a 45 minute uh, journey by bus and train. So I think that's still tolerable. But like, I know I had friends who were like one and a half hours away. I think that's really crazy. Eh? Like one and a half hours away. So that means every day, right, you go back and forth, it's, it's three hours. And like commuting takes energy, man. Like you might not realize it, but commuting really takes energy. Can you imagine like you really fight through <laughs> the disgusting um, lines in the bus and, and the train and then you only end up home super tired. How are you going to invest that energy to, to study? You know, it's, it's, it's a different ball game altogether. Wait, then, then let me put yeah. it this way. What's the maximum travel time you advocate for? Like this is the max. Beyond that, don't go to the JC. I think actually 45 minutes is the sweet spot. Lah. Okay, like, like, of course, uh, well, hmm, 45 minutes for me would be really like kind of stretching it. So, like, CJ was considered a bit far for me already. Like, ideally, right? Okay, I could have gone to SR, which was very much closer to my home, but then there was a trade off, right? So, I think SR is about half an hour away and CJ is 45 minutes. Uh, but CJ was quite a bit better in terms of academics. At, at that time at least, I, I don't know about now. So I found that trick to be worthy, lah, right? Because uh, the resources are better, the notes are better. So I might as well, like it, it's just 15 minutes something. But any further than 45 minutes, I don't think I would have gone. Yeah, I don't think I would have gone to anywhere else. That's a bit much for me. And that being said, right, okay, even on the comments, like this are a bit extreme, lah, but in my preparation for GP, right, I wouldn't waste time on the, on the bus. So I had a straight bus um, all the way from uh, my school near, near to my, my uh, one of my MRTs near my house. And, and, and I remember every day on the journey, right, it's about 30 minutes, right? I would exhaust all the articles on the BBC news app. Like all the articles, try to learn new words, uh, gain new perspectives, especially towards like J2. Like that's how shared it should be. I feel, I really feel, because like, you know, you're competing with the brightest mind lah, from uh, like those IT kids that, that you did not compete with in O-levels. So you really got to be fair and like try to do your due diligence and like right. just you're, get her as a curve. You're a grinder, man, man. Okay, anyway, uh, we will talk about how, how we can grind through JC. We have plenty of episodes coming out uh, once a week for you. Okay, I, I do want to share this point about distance because it relates to me so much. As I told everyone earlier in the podcast, right? I live in Ishun, but I studied in Bedok. So the transportation was slightly more than over an hour. And trust me when I say this, I completely hated it. Okay. I will say this, uh, okay. I don't think I was a good student in JC. I, I was a responsible student by all means. I wasn't a troublemaker, but like my eight, my attendance, right? When I graduated, right? If I, when I look at my report card, it says 86%. Okay. Let me break down how this 86% occurred. Okay. So in my world, my first one year, uh, maybe one and a half years in JC, right? On average, I typically attended uh, close to uh, 4 out of 5 days. Uh, on better weeks, 9 out of 10 days. And that wasn't because I was a bad student and I wanted to skip school to, to punk. It was just because I was way too tired. You know, if I wanted to go to school, I had to wake up at around 5.40 and leave the house by 6.10 to be able to reach school before the 7.20 mark. And given my trainings ending at 8.30, 9 o'clock, and then we, after that, we go out, eat Zuzha dinner, right? We ended at 10.30, and I go home. It was already 11 plus. By the time I shower, it was 12. I had zero time for homework. And if even if I sleep at 12, right, I only have like slightly over five hour plus of rest. It was impossible, basically. So I really suffered, and I felt sick a lot, which is 
the first reason why I skipped school quite a bit. Secondly, it was just that uh, a lot of times I just overslept because my body didn't want me to wake up. So by the time I woke up, it was like I was late for school already. I was like, shit, I'm not, I'm not going to clog in my leg hours. So I just decided to just rest up. It was only after I stopped my CCA, uh, after A divisions were over, then I started many, started to get proper rest. And then from there, I was able to attend school like on a regular basis, like a student would. Like. So that was how I got the 86%. My consideration why, even though there were a lot more schools around my area, like Anderson JC, uh, or even not that far away, but uh, maybe like NJC, you know, like maybe a 45 minute kind of trip. Uh, for myself, it was really because of CCA. Uh, out of the schools that I could go to, the floorball schools that worked out for me, uh, for my situation back then was VJ and TJ. So I only had those two choices to play around with and I decided to go to TJ. La. Um, on hindsight, the distance was a killer. I think what Iman said was super true. It drains you a lot. Um, one way I started to work around it was to study on my commute. But even then, that was tough too because in the morning, you probably, you know, you're half awake, you're probably too tired to study. And by the time you end school or your CCA and you're heading back home, you're also way too tired. So the commute itself, as much as we say you can study on your commute, it is not as easy as it sounds. So if I were to give a word of advice, right, the distance does matter. Uh, but once again, it's down to your priorities. So. I All think right. traveling time should be a big consideration. Like uh, Daryl mentioned, it really affects your energy your mood even, right? And your, your attitude towards like how you treat your day. So like try your best to get into like a reasonably distance uh, JC, right? Which, which still uh, fulfills your academic, um, your, your academic demands or rather the demands you have of the school, right? Distance should be one of the key factors that really determine your choice. So what, what, what's the next question, Daryl? All right, so we talked about distance. We talked about CCA. What are some other factors you yourself considered when you chose your JC? Okay, you're not gonna lie, uh, friends. Okay, really, friends, friends really, really mattered for me. Like, okay, I'm quite a social person. So um to me, when I made my choice for my JC, right, I had a lot of friends going to CJ really. And they were good friends, la, all the way that I had from um from my secondary school, from my church, from, from many different places in my life. And a lot of them uh, were of the same frequency. So I knew that when I went to CJ, it was going to be a blast. Like, no matter, like, I, as in, I knew I was going to have so much fun also. So uh, it really uh, checked off that one social aspect um, that I feel is really important also in schools. So you should put a bit of emphasis on, okay, where are your friends going? Because it is not just uh, about grinding and getting, like, the grade that, that you want. It's also about enjoying the process and like having a positive environment to help you achieve the goals that you set for yourself. And I feel that friends and the right company really is a big factor that contributes to that. Lah. So would I be able to do the same things if I didn't have the same support structures? I would say no, right? I think it's really important to have the, the friends, the, the people who are pushing you uh, in a competitive way also around you. So that should be another consideration that you take uh, when you're making your choice for JC. Can you imagine if you go to like a place and it's all unfamiliar faces, people are, you know, in that, in that sense, uh, a bit aggressive and not as welcoming. I think you would be quite daunted also. Uh, but some people have a different perspective. So some people think that, well, you should expose yourself to completely new people, new everything. Uh, but I feel that, I don't know, there's a certain sense of um, comfort Right, in knowing your good friends are going to the same place as you. And most of you would, would definitely uh, end up with well, your friends in the same JC. Lah, right? If you all study together before all levels and you have the same routines, I'm quite sure you end up in the same place. So yeah, lah, just do your best. Um, find your friends there also. I think it's important. Yeah, yeah I think on to that point, right? I, I sort of agree and disagree at the same time. I had a bunch of close friends that played floorball and we moved on from Catholic High to TJC together. I think I think the friendship there is really strong because we have so much in common. You know, like even when I went to uni, right? Uh, he was like my roommate and things like that. So we were really buddy buddy, and I think that the kind of friendship is invaluable. But I would disagree on the fact that if you're choosing your JC, right, you should choose it because of your friends. My personal belief is that when you move on to a new chapter in life, it is not that you're forgetting your friends, 
but it's more of you're opening a new chapter in your life. And when you do, you meet new people, you experience new things, and you sort of like step out of your comfort zone in that sense. So I think there's merits in meeting new people in a new JC. I don't think you should restrict yourself uh, from choosing JC because of where your friends are going. If uh, all works out and y'all do happen to go to the same school, that's great. Uh, I think that's okay. But I don't think you should choose to go to schools just because your friends are going. So that's my personal opinion. So I met new friends in JC and I managed to, to, to make good friends too. But that being said, right, I think if you're going to an IP school, that might have a slight difference. Even though some of the tutors they did share, like for example, Brian, which is our history tutor, he was in Dunman High. So he went through the IP track and he has been with his classmates for like the last four years before they moved into JC together. So I think if you're going to those schools that are opening up um, for JE, right, which means if you take O level, you can join an IP school. I think when you enter those environments at the start, it might be harder to adapt. But I still feel it's about how you make friends and how you how you learn to to open up to people as well. So so I think I slightly disagree with Iman's point. Uh, at the same time, I also agree with it lah because those friendships are priceless. It's not something that your academics can measure. But I feel like you shouldn't base your decision for your JC on your friends. What do you say to that, Iman? <laughs> I think that, okay, uh, it really depends also. So if it's a situation where you have, uh, let's say, school A, school B, and you know they are both around the same, um, around the same academic standard, same resources, similar at least, okay, and then uh, tons of your friends are going to one particular school, and, well, none are going to the other. Then I think uh, if, if it's really that case, like, where the JCs are very close, fight. Um, then I will go to the ones where I already have friends. Uh, you will definitely, no matter what, have uh, chances to make new friends also. Because, uh, well, JC is just so diverse. And definitely, you'll meet so many new people. So I think forming new friendships is, is good, it's great. Um, but having familiar faces around would, would make the process just that much more enjoyable. Uh, that's how I feel. But like Daryl said, like something that he mentioned, uh, which I agree with is, don't let that be the major determinant of your choice for JC. So if, let's say you did outstandingly well for your O-levels and, and you, you managed to enter a very, very hardcore, super good JC, uh, but all your friends are going to, let's say, somewhere that it might not be as good, then I would say, okay, maybe take the leap of faith and go to the new JC, make new friends there, right? Because, well, they, just because your friends didn't have the opportunity to to go to such a JC doesn't mean that you should deprive yourself of one. That's how I feel about it. Uh, if, if, we, if we put everything into perspective, uh, out of the factors that we talked about, like we talked about uh, the importance of school culture, uh, like, you know, different schools having different culture. We talked about uh, distance when we are choosing our JC. We talked about uh, CCA. We talked about your friends, right? So if you had one thing to choose, you know, when you're deciding a JC, what would have been the determining factor? I think it would be best to rank the factors. All right, um, let's rank it. I'll give you my rank yeah. after this. First one would be uh, academic placement. That means the resources, uh, how the school is known academic. That should be the first. Second one for me would be distance. Third would be friends. And then I'm sorry, uh, Daryl, but last is CCA. Uh. CCA to me didn't matter because no matter which JC you go to, you can still get a CCA. So that's how I, how I looked at it. Uh. Hey man, that, that's cool, man. We, we, we are supposed to have different perspectives so that we can all... Correct, correct. No, we'll, be, we'll be the same person, right? Yeah. Our, our, our students are the same, really. We don't, don't need to be the same person. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Even though both, actually, to all the listeners out there, we actually have the same surname. Both our surname is ER, but we are not brothers. Uh, we suspect we might be distantly related cousins. Okay, but anyway, back to my list, yeah, okay? Yeah, is what you were saying? You just yeah, yeah. Like yeah. So, so uh, if I were to rank for myself, right, out of the four, right, um, I'm just going to rank this based on uh, what I thought at that time, and then I'll compare it with what I know now on hindsight, okay? So, at the point when I was choosing my JC, my first consideration was CCA. Uh, second consideration was academics. Third consideration was friends. Last consideration was distance. Okay, but if you ask me now what I would have considered when I was choosing my JC, first would have been academics. So I want to go to the school with the best resources if I had a chance to re-choose. Um, second, I would consider the CCA still. 
So CCA is important to me because at that point in time, it was very important for my personal growth. Third, I'll consider the distance and last, I'll consider friends. So I go through my list again. Mm. Uh, it's school culture slash academics, CCA, distance followed by friends for me. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, guess, I, I think that's also valid. It really depends based on your personality and your circumstances. For, for both of us, I can see why you would think so. Uh, and, and how it has, perhaps the distance, the commute time has shaped uh, your, your decision uh, and changed it quite, quite a fair bit. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I'm glad we had this chat. I mean, it was always nice to have a different perspective on things. Uh, I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, if you are considering whether to be a small fish in a big pond, I think this is one thing that both me and Emmanuel both advocate for, which is to swim upstream, uh, join the big boys. Uh, when you surround yourself with the right kind of people, when you are given the right resources, I think you, are, you, you will be more likely to succeed. And there's little reason to discourage yourself from doing that. Um, but I think for today, I think it's pretty informative. Uh, I hope me and Emmanuel sharing has been helpful for you as you uh, approach your O-level results uh, and as you are deciding uh, which JC to go to via JAE. Uh, as usual, we'll be available on Instagram if you are trying to you know, give suggestions on what topics we should be discussing next. Um, Emmanuel, do you have anything to say before we, we go off today? Okay, I'd like to thank all of you who have made it to this section of the podcast. You guys are the MVPs. Like, it, it's really keeping us going. Lah. So I feel that we are very appreciative for people who find value in what we do. So really, thank you so much for listening in to uh, our little podcast here. And we hope that we continue to provide you the value all the way through. We want to be like, you know, that go-to podcast, that go-to group that always provides you with uh, things that actually help you through your difficult Okay, hopefully easier because of us, JC Life. Yeah. Yeah, so, so with that, uh, we come to the end of episode one of the group chat uh, brought to you by Overmark. Uh, if you do not know about Overmark, we're actually a platform driven by tutors for students. Uh, we actually provide free notes, quality free notes for all subjects at O levels and A levels. You can download those resources directly on our website. Uh, other than that, we also conduct crash courses for students if, if you're in need of a quick revision and you want to really absorb the exam preparation tips that uh, our tutors has to offer. Uh, on top of that, you can easily interact with us on Instagram. We are available on Telegram as well. And if you're listening into this podcast, I think by the time this is released, uh, you, you, uh, our TikTok platform will be up as well. So do look out for that as our student content creators uh, will be bombing us with entertaining content, I hope. Uh, but with that, we come to the end of episode one. Uh, Emmanuel, thank you for your time and I look forward to next week's podcast. All right, guys. Hope to see you all in two. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. It sound right, boy.